So one of the patterns that most of us find amusing is a sidecar pattern. It has a fancy name, right? Let's be honest, it has a fancy name. So sidecar pattern is something that um, if people are aware, they don't know when to use it. If people are not aware, they are always fascinated by, hey, it's a fancy word, what does it do? So let's talk about the sidecar architecture at Atlassian and what they do, how they do it. And spoiler alert, it helps them reduce their latency by 70%. So with that in mind, let's dig deeper to understand what they are actually doing. And through this, although we are understanding their, uh, although we are understanding what Atlassian did, but more importantly, I'd like to put focus more on understanding the sidecar pattern, how to use it, when to use it, their advantages and when not to use it. Right? Okay, so let's start. Atlassian has one of the most critical services at Atlassian is called TCS, which is which is essentially called as tenant contact service. And this is something that is high throughput, low latency, typically in five to six millisecond and even lesser range than that. Uh, highly available it has four to five nines of availability and it is called several times in every request that you fire on any atlassian product let's say confluence jira bitbucket whatever this is something that gets called several times in each customer request so super critical service literally that's the case where if tcs is down the tenant context service is down atlassian is down the architecture of tcs is something that we'll discuss later Let's dig deeper into the sidecar part on what happens. Now, this service is something that is used by other products within Atlassian. It's not an externally exposed service. It is. It basically tells that which tenant it belongs to and it gets the tenant meta information and then, then it proceeds further. That's the whole job of tenant contact service. Right? Now, a lot of internal products at Atlassian, as I said, Bitbucket, this, this, that, that, are using TCS service. Now, when they're using it, what happened with them is one of the team was unhappy and they kept complaining that this service is not performant. And you can very clearly see from the graph where there is an average latency. So this is the observed latency by that specific team. Which is, you see, can see how high latency that they have observed. So either it's low or it fails. That's what they complain. Right? So they see that these are the latencies that they have observed, but while the P99 of the TCS service is around single digit millisecond and average is even lesser. So given this, why is a single team facing such high latencies and failure rates, but no other team is facing? When they dig deeper, they realize that this particular team was not using the TCS service efficiently. So the client that they wrote, they did not write it well, right? That's the whole thing. It lagged a bunch of best practices and they made a lot of sequential call which they should have done in parallel and whatnot. So blah, blah, blah. Problem was with the client of it, which has not written a good enough code or rather did not follow the best practices that they should have followed while calling the TCS service. Okay. So how do they fix it? For example, you say, reach out to them, ask them to change it, right? That's one way. So either you talk to them, tell them the best practice, let them use it, right? That's one. What, what's the opposite of it is you solve for all. Either you solve for one or you solve for all. It's always better that you solve for all because today it might be service A who is facing this. Tomorrow it might be 10 other service who did not follow the best practices. Okay. So what did TCS team do? TCS team said, hey, if we rely on other teams to write the client part and like make a call. So they typically make HTTP calls to get the response. If we rely on them, they, and we cannot expect all of them to follow the best practices. So what you should do is we should write that. We should write the client. We should write a sidecar who does this. So that's where sidecar is introduced. Now let me explain what sidecar is. Sidecar is pretty simple, pretty simple concept. Now imagine this is your EC2 instance, right? This is your application that is running. This is your service. Let's say Bitbucket service or Jira, Jira microservice or whatever microservice that you have. This is the web server of it is running. Now imagine this server or this web server. So this is your EC2 machine and this is your web server. Imagine this service wants to talk to TCS. So either this service makes an HTTP call to TCS to get the response, but that is where the best practices have to be followed, which let's say this team did not follow. That's a problem. 
so how this thing is solved this thing is solved by introducing a sidecar think of sidecar as a separate process the job of this process is to interact with tcs service this is tcs sidecar this is tcs service tcs sidecar talks to tcs service and this client your your microservice talks to the sidecar now obviously this both resides on the same ec2 instance so which means it's not a network network call that goes across machines it's literally a local http call that gets the response so what they've done is sidecar is something that sits right next to your application in one ec2 in ec2 instance kubernetes pod whatever you may want to call it or whatever you are using and that's why for each uh, for each web server you would have one sidecar like this right and the sidecar talks to tcs so all the best practices and all are feed in here and this is something that tcs team owns so they ensure all best practices are followed right, to talk to tcs service right. and because it's a sidecar not a library so here you had another option you could have said hey why didn't tcs team wrote their own library which could be used by this microservice the thing is if you if they would have chosen to write a library the problem would have been number one which is let's say this is written in go assume that this is written in go and the uh, library if they would have written they would have they would have to write it in go if let's say some team wants to use java they would have to write uh, their tcs client in java and if someone uses rust they would have to write one for rust and so on and so forth so that makes it complicated and they would have to manage those many stuff not worth it so what they said is let us build a sidecar and let this service talk to this over http now your best practice is not required like it's very thin wrapper over their tcs apis and takes care of all the best practices so simple http call over here and this makes call to tcs all the uh, retries failures uh, parallelization and everything is taken care of by this sidecar so that is where sidecar comes a super important role so sidecar they chose sidecar over library because of they wanted to be language agnostic that's why libraries are not language agnostic that's one and the communication was done over local http so not a network call network call to different machine it's like local http call that they have made and all the best practices as i said baked into this sidecar that made the life easier now when they did this they rolled it out to bunch of internal service obviously the service that was facing that elevated uh, elevated response time obviously they shared it with them but to one of the better services who already followed the best practices they also saw a benefit from 1 millisecond p90 p99 whatever the metric is they reached till 0.3 so which means there was still a scope of improvement for, even for teams that have followed best practices given this a lot of other teams also followed that hey it's a good thing we all also should move to a sidecar based architecture and it's just a simple installation of sidecar next to their web server that makes their life easier right so with that they got two big impacts first is they got improvement seen by the client because now the best best practices are followed by everyone that's one more importantly because of that there's an overall reduction in the number of requests that have gone to the tcs service because there might be where let's say one of the team let's say this team they were getting 1 millisecond but there was still a scope of by reducing it by 70% right there was still a massive scope because by following all possible best practices so given that now everybody is using sidecar pattern and sidecar is owned by the tcs team they baked in all the best practices so the total number of requests that had to be handled by the tcs service is dramatically reduced because now everybody is following best practices baked out of the box that's the beauty of it so this is how you get like benefits not just on the perceived latencies but also on the number of requests it needs to handle because everybody is following best practices now and this is the importance like this is the key importance of sidecar and not a library so language agnostic if you would want to go sidecar is the way to go a little bit complex you don't want to have a library plus it may want to have its self execution environment and what not sidecar is a better option in that case and right. so key takeaways two key takeaways first sidecar pattern can be heavy can heavily optimize your system 
if done well because there are a lot of options like there are a lot of examples where sidecar have been not properly configured and people faced a bunch of performance issues because of that we'll talk it some we'll talk about it sometime later okay right? so if you use sidecar well it's a very amazing way to optimize a lot of stuff ki i'll give you another example of sidecar that you can look at is think about matrix collector so let's say you have your web server you have some logs that you are putting in or some auxiliary matrix that you are putting in you may want you may run a fluentd sidecar right which you dump the matrix to the disk fluentd picks that up right that's one way to do it and then it emits it to the fluentd service or the or the fluentd server right that's what they do so matrix collector log collector are typically sidecar observability tools are typically sidecar this is another example of sidecar right so makes your life super easy second uh, key takeaway is the solution that you are developing do not try to build solution for one of your customers try to see if you can build a horizontal solution that benefits all this way you do optimization once or you do you implement your solution once and it benefits the entire ecosystem like how the tcs team did instead of just educating one of the team to follow the best practices and writing a doc they built a sidecar pattern that uh, they built a sidecar that every single of their customers can use it a horizontal solution that's the best part and yeah this is all what i wanted to cover today so thank you so much for watching this again is a dissection of a blog from atlassian i have linked this blog in the description down below you can find it below the description or in the i card do check that out and dig deeper into it it's pretty awesomely written right that's all apart from this do check out my courses on system design meant for uh, senior folks and uh, like sg2 onwards it's highly practical completely no fluff it's pretty fun we build lot of prototypes we design systems as if you are going to ship it in production no mumbo jumbo no random boxes we develop we have proper justification for proper trade offs for every single design decision we make right so if you are interested into knowing those things in and out uh do check my courses or they like i have been doing it for 4 years and i have an absolute blast talking about it right so yeah links for that in the description down below as well and yeah this is all what i wanted to cover today i hope you found it interesting hope you found it amazing that's it for this one i'll see you in the next one thanks a lot